everyone, Peter Hewitt, La Artistino here. Today I've got a really exciting piece of Happy Mail to show you. Now I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but if I pull this up to the lens it may focus on that name, and the name there is Joanna Basford. Now a couple of weeks ago I practically fell off my seat because I got an email from her. Now she explained that, as we all know, her new book is coming out in, in August and usually what her marketing team does is it sends out pre-release copies to journalists and book reviewers to, to sort of like give a bit of hype to um, get the, the ball rolling and the interest happening to let people know that the book is on the way. This time she's taken over the role herself and it chose um, 30 of her favourite colourists to send a copy to instead of sending it to the usual people to review and I was absolutely floored to find out that I'm actually one of them <laughs> um, I'm a bit emotional here because I'm so happy about this so uh, how about I stop talking and let's just open it and have a look at a new book now I haven't even cut it open so please excuse my awesome cutting skills I will try to be careful and not scare you this time with my cutting skills but I'll just slice this bag open along here and we'll see what she's got inside. There's another package. And we'll open this one. Just make sure there's no address on it. Good. We'll slice this one open too. Oh no, hang on. I can just get it open here. Uh, oh, it's taped down the center. That's what's happening. Okay. And here we go. Beautifully wrapped with a little butterfly sticker on it. Ah, I'm not waiting. Let's open it. Oh, tearing all this paper. And that bit there. Uh, my family are terrible at unwrapping presents. Half of them like to take forever and take off every tiny little bit of tape. And like take half an hour to unwrap a present. I'm not like that. I just like to rip it open. I'm going to save that little sticker, that's so gorgeous. And here we are! Oh my god, there it is! There it is, the magical jungle. <sighs> okay, well let's do a real quick review while we're here. Let's open it up. Again, we've got this gorgeous, uh, same sized um, edition as all of her other previous three books. You've got the gorgeous gold embossing on the cover, which makes it look so classy. And oh look, there's a tiger there. Ah, I love it! Once again, we have the uh, cover that folds out with the picture on it. Now this one doesn't have the dust jacket on it, so I think this is probably the US print of the book, but it doesn't matter because it's the same paper, it's all gorgeous. Oh my goodness, my goodness, she's written my name in her flower letters. Oh look, you got to get a close up of this one. Here we go. There we are in her floral sort of um, letter, uh, actually not floral, her leaf hat writing, it's, it's gorgeous. And a little happy colouring. Fantastic. Okay, now, same sort of format as before. You've got the uh, uh, design going around all the publishing information here. You've got your nameplate there. You've got your introduction and of course all the hidden objects that you can find. There's a number of there's 63 butterflies. Have fun counting all those. And, and this time she has included whoops, some tips for uh, exploring the book a little bit better. Now, I might just zoom in slightly more so you can see this a bit better. Okay, now we've finished the unripping stage. And let's get into the book proper. Now, a couple of things that um, I've heard about this book is that she has been taking notice of some of the comments and suggestions of her fans and has made a lot more double spreads, which suits me right to the ground because I love the double spread pages. Uh, she has uh, made sure not to leave any important detail in the centre of the page where the page fold is because she knows that there is difficulty in colouring in in that section so now we've got nice clean half and half to colour on ah, and she's left lots of lovely big spaces for blending and, and special effects ah beautiful sort of a 
Mandelary like pitch. Oh, I like this, the tree growing out of the book. That's clever. <laughs> Some parrots. All this, of course, is the jungle theme book. We've got a fanciful looking building here. Sort of something you might find made out of odd bits and pieces in the jungle. And you've got this lovely flowy, what they call it, ribbon style design going across two pages. It's lovely. I like the way she sort of like made them a bit big, this one a bit bigger so that it incorporates more of the page, but there's still plenty of space around the outside if you want to uh, personalise it with your own things. Ah, beautiful. Oh, okay. A, f a floral wreath, very jungle theme. Ah, and it's got a um, bird of paradise plant in it. I have one of these plants outside the front of my house. It's ginormous. At any one time it's got two dozen heads on it. So it's just starting to flower now. Middle of winter, mind you. It's crazy. It flowers at odd times throughout the year. So I love that. That definitely be colouring this one. One of my first pictures, I think. Another double page spread. Oops, hang on, I'm trying to keep this in the centre of the camera here. So excited, I'm wriggling it all around the place, aren't I? I've not opened this book before, as you can see, so that's how firm the binding is. I'll give it a nice push down for you. Again, it's um, sewn bound as well, so it can fly. Look how flat that can get. Okay, isn't that great? Great for colouring. Right, now we'll be able to see things proper. A tiger, love it. <laughs> And a pair of pictures here. Birds. Another double page spread. Woohoo! And this, of course, is in this beautiful card. This is the off white card, the sort of that um, ivory colour that you saw in her first two books, in contrast to the bright, brilliant white colour that you saw in um, Lost Ocean. This is the ivory colour. Of course, you have her signature heart that appears in every book, in, in the theme of the book. This is a lovely double page um, mirror image. Uh, oh, we've got a panda. It's a Chinese theme there. One of these wallpaper pictures where there's a whole lot of detail that will keep you going for, for weeks, actually. That would keep you going for weeks. Another beautiful floral double pager. And here we go, as usual, she has a mixture of more complicated pictures and simpler pictures. So we have a chameleon here and a gecko. And this one's ripe. I would probably do this with a, a bark of a tree so you'd see the, um, the bark behind it. I'd work out some kind of way of doing it, either with pencils or with pastels, I think. This is lovely too. You could just colour it the way it is and put a colour gradient underneath, maybe sort of like a, a green or a blue or a red going up to, to nothing to the ivory colour. Or you could add little animals in the bottom as well and do the forest, the uh, jungle floor if, uh, if you're that way inclined. We could put anything down there. That would look great. And this lovely piece over the top would act as a curtain for the picture below. Ah, we've got lemurs, Madagascan lemurs. And a tree. Beautiful. Oh, I love this one too. This is like the canopy of the uh, of the jungle with all the vines hanging down. That's ah, got a sloth. It's a three-toed sloth. I have a thing about sloths too. I think they're just so crazy, beautiful creatures. Just so different from everything else. These are a couple of more complex ones. You've got the Mandela and lovely pineapple themed um, wallpaper piece. Ah, and the skull has to appear somewhere. There's his skull. It's very, um, very jungle themed. I like that. It's good. She's got the whole design around it too. I love it. And a tropical insect. I have to find out what sort of insect that one is. Now you've got some great big leaves here in a double spread. So if you like to experiment with doing colour gradients and patterns on your leaves, this is perfect. Ah, oh, and another double page spread with lots of flowers. Love it. Ah, oh, and this is, this is cute. These little, I don't even know what you would call those, but they're lovely little pieces that are just, oh, very iconic in our work. I like that. Oh, I'm gushing. I know, I'm gushing. There's another uh, building house piece. 
and a circular piece and oh we've got a bit of an underwater piece here as well so you could imagine that was the um, base of a waterfall there and what you'd see underneath it I'm just, this book is, as you can see, I've never opened it before, so I'm just pushing all the pages down so you can get a good look. So I'm sorry if my hands keep diving in the way. Some more chameleons and another uh, wallpaper piece that's themed with elephants and parrots. Another beautiful mirror piece. I'm thinking you could do these two the same colours or you could do them opposing colours, that would look great. They don't actually connect in the middle so you could have this as one set of colours and this themed as another set of colours. Or you could do it matching. You've got an elephant in a bottle there. Another beautiful complex mandala piece. I have noticed um, these pieces don't seem to be as teensy-weensy detailed as the pieces that you saw in Lost Ocean and I think that's a good thing um, though I did enjoy the, the pieces in Lost Ocean I found it with the tiny little details using the fine markers I think they were just a little bit too small for some people a little bit too fiddly so this you've got the same effect here but the pattern is slightly bigger so that you've got a little bit more leeway there with your colouring. And you can do a little bit more with the with um, shading and colour gradients. I love this elephant in the bottle, that's cute. A tree branch with um, parrots on it. Ah, and then you've got this interesting, another uh, mandala with a, a parrot theme for way. And another circular piece with uh, the flowers. Ah, orchids. It's a page of orchids and forest flowers. And a ribbon piece again. Oh, so much to do in this book. And a mask piece of a tiger. Ah, I can imagine that is going to be done brilliant. I can think of some ways to do that. And another wreath pattern with flowers. Ah, another double page spread. Oh, with a snake in it. I like snakes by the way, We, uh, my husband used to be a snake catcher, local snake catcher. Anyway, that's the last piece in here and I'll just, I won't, I'll just flick through these. There are of course the, um, the pictures at the end that uh, have the answers to where to find things. Uh, if you don't want to see, don't look. The, these are great I think for if you want to try a few colours on them to get an idea of what colour schemes you want and also to tick off when you finish them as well. And it's a quick way just to reference the book if you're looking for which picture to colour next. And she has included a colour palette test page that is fantastic. I love having these back pages, plain back pages that I can experiment to see how my different art materials are going to work. Uh, this is the same paper as previously used in her book so I know already how much my material materials are going to work on it but it's still good if I get new materials I can test it on that page. And these last pieces these pages are perforated to make them easy to tear out and they're single sided, they've just got a faint pattern on the back but you can colour them in and tear them out for um, framing. Oh that's a wonderful idea. So we've got a round piece there, an elephant with lots of jungle doodles over it, we've got a large more complicated mandala style piece but a squarish mandala style piece. Is there such a thing as a square mandala? I don't know. And oh that's nice, I like that one. We've got flamingos. So each of these pieces you can tear out if you want and you can use any medium on them because as you can see it doesn't matter if it bleeds through. Now I believe, I remember hearing that um, Joanna has said that it's not really suitable for watercolours, uh, this paper, uh, it's, as I said it's the same paper in the past, it will buckle a bit but if you're very careful with the amount of water that you're using you can use very gently or, um, or watercolour pencils or do an ink tens pencils would also work on that. Just don't flood the page with water or you'll get all sorts of wrinkles happening. But everything else, everything else would look fine on this. Back page, again you've got the little piece that you can spread out. It's not too shiny a surface so you can actually colour this and have no problems with it at all I don't think. You've got a little um, mention of her previous book Lost Ocean and the postcard size edition of it. 
And there you go. Well, I feel very fortunate and this book will be out in August, so keep an eye out for it. Uh, you're going to love it. I already love it. I can't wait to start colouring in it. And I'll certainly be looking at doing tutorial, eight, at least one tutorial in the near future using this book. And until next time, I hope you're enjoying any colouring adventures you are currently on and happy colouring! you're enjoying any colouring adventures that you are currently on and until next time happy colouring